Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we shall be learning about the proof of the theorem which we have left behind in the previous video. So previously, we have studied about monotone sequences in relation to adjoint operators, right? Bounded self-adjoint linear operators. So uh, let's just quickly look at the definition here. If we have a sequence of this kind Tn which is consisting of self-adjoint linear operators which are defined on the given Hilbert space and uh, then we call the sequence to be monotonically increasing whenever we have a relationship of this kind among the uh, all the operators and uh, it is a monotonically decreasing sequence whenever we have a relation of this kind on all the operators. So this was the definition and we have studied about this property for this monoton sequence if we are given some uh, sequence tn which is of which is a sequence of self adjoint bounded linear operators defined on the given hilbert space such that we have a relationship that t1 is related to t2 t2 is related to t3 and so on we keep on doing like this and finally we have the operator k now what is the op this operator k k is again a bounded self-adjoint and linear operator which is defined on the given Hilbert space H itself. And moreover, it is given to us that if among all the C1, T2, T3, T4 and so on, if any Tj commutes with K, we suppose here that any Tj commutes with K and any Tj commutes with it. Uh, every tm that means if you take any operator say t1 it would commute with t2 t3 t4 and so on and moreover it would also commute with k and every uh, the same would happen for the operator t2 t3 t4 and so on so if we have all these things then the op this uh, sequence is strongly operator convergent and the limit operator uh, t in this case uh, this is the limit operator to which the sequence is converging this would be linear this would be bounded this would be self adjoint and moreover it would also the limit operator would also be related to k so and uh, if you remember what do we mean by related it means that we are saying the inner product of txx that is less than equal to the inner product of kx with x right so this is the case okay let's proceed on to the proof here for the proof we consider here that s uh, we consider some quantity sn and we call that to be k minus tn and we prove the result by proving these two parts so in the first part let's see what do we have we will prove that the sequence which is nothing but the inner product of sn square x with x where this n is the given index which varies according to the first term second term and so on so we will prove firstly that this sequence converges for every element x which is a member of h and secondly using this thing we will prove that we have a strong convergence so that means for every value of x this thing holds t n x will will tend to t x and here this thing will depend on x whenever you change this element x from h the uh, you would have different convergence right so here the limit operator here in this part we will prove that this limit operator t is linear would be self adjoint and bounded and how will we prove all these things using the uniform boundedness theorem if you do not remember this theorem this is a very famous result in given in the basic functional analysis course you may please refer back to the functional analysis course okay now let's proceed and prove this first part first so for the proof of this first part we wanted to prove that the sequence converges for every x so here let's see how we reach at this result first of all because we are given tn and k as self adjoint operators if that is so if you see what is the definition for this sn sn is constructed from k minus tn so that means sn is also self adjoint right therefore if sn is self adjoint we can make this calculation if we take this quantity sm square minus sn sm 
and uh, so we, we we could rearrange it and write it like this right and then now we can use the definition for s m or s n that we have defined it is k minus t n so s m would be k minus t m so we would have k minus t m here for s m for s n that is k minus t n for s m we again have k minus t m so this k and this k cancels out so we are left with this thing and we assume that m is less than equal to n so that means if that is so tm would be related to tn why because it is the assumption that is given to us in the statement of this theorem if that is so so uh, this operator tn minus tm is a positive operator and similarly because we are given this assumption that tm is less than equal to k whichever t operator you take that is going to be less than equal to k or it it would be related to k if that is so then also k minus cm would be a positive operator so uh, now here in this case we have this thing and this thing both as positive operators and moreover they commute with each other so that means the product is a positive operator as well this is a result that we have studied in the previous videos so that means we have uh, we have this as the positive operator if this is the positive operator this is also the positive operator right according to this theorem here okay so that means whenever we have m less than equal to, uh, m less than n then this thing is positive that means this thing is positive that means sm square is greater than equal to sn sm so mark this as equation 1 next we similarly we can prove that sn sm is greater than equal to sn square how now in this case we take sn sm minus sn square again rearrange it a bit again using the definitions for sn and sm and then cancelling out the terms we are left with this thing and this thing is is positive being the product of two positive terms right so here we uh, according to equation 1 and equation 2 we have this inequality so we have sn square less than equal to sn sm less than equal to sm square whenever m is less than n so this is one thing that we got from here now we can use the definition for self adjointness here of sn now because uh, k is self adjoint tn is self adjoint so that means sn is also self adjoint that i have already told you so using this result here we can take the inner product of sm square x with x right now because sm square that is greater than e uh, equal to sn sm so this inner product is also greater than equal to sn sm right and this thing is further greater than equal to this sn square according to the inequality that we obtained above right so that means we now have sn square x and x the, their inner product now because sn is self adjoint so we can shift this quantity to this side no issue in that according to the definition for self adjointness so we have the inner product of sn x with sn x and this inner product could be written as the norm of sn x square right and because it is a norm square it is a positive quantity right so that means we started with this thing this this thing is greater than equal to zero right the inner product of sm x square with x that is a uh, positive quantity so this shows that if we talk about the sequence of the inner products of sn square x with x whenever x is a fixed quantity that is a monotonically decreasing sequence and this sequence is of non-negative numbers why because we have just proved that all the terms here are positive if that is so if we have a monotonically decreasing sequence and it consists of non-negative numbers so that would definitely reach the point zero right so uh, you can imagine it like this suppose we have this number line here this is the zero this is plus infinity and this side is minus infinity if that is so if uh, we have a sequence which decreases here right so it will ultimate, uh, ultimately reach the point zero if it is consisting of non-negative numbers so that uh, obviously tells us that it would converge for sure right so we have proved here our first part that the sequence would converge in order to prove the second part 
we wanted to prove the strong convergence of the sequence Tn. So that means we wanted to prove the sequence Tnx that converges, right? Now, because we have assumed that all the Tn, they commute with all the Tm and with all K. So in this case, we would say the Sj's, they also commute with each other. And moreover, all the SJs, they are self-adjoint. Why? Because according to the definition of SJ, we have defined it in this manner only. Now, so, so that whenever we have the index M less than N, so we could do this calculation. We can take the norm of SMX minus SNX square. This thing, according to the definition of inner product, could be written in this way. Right now, because this operator is self adjoint, we could shift this operator to this side. So it would become SM minus SN square X and the, it's inner product with X. So we could open up the square here and separate out the terms by simple calculation of inner products. Right. So we have these terms here and here because you see the reasoning here because you had this SM, SN, this thing was greater than equal to SN square, right? So if you apply the negative sign here, the inequality would be reversed, right? If that is so, so we have this expression that minus two times the inner product of SM, SN, X with X would be less than equal to minus two times the inner product of SN square X with X, according to the relationship that we have derived in the first case this one right so using this thing here because we have this less than equal to equality right so we could uh, skip this term here right so we could replace this term by this term here and we can uh, do the simple calculation so minus two times this term and plus one time this term it would be minus one time this term here so that means we have from this relation obtained that this norm this is equal to uh, this is less than equal to this quantity right that is what i have written over here so i have this norm less than equal to this quantity and from the result above and using the convergence that we have proved here th this is one result and another result tells us that the sequence would converge if the sequence s n square x uh, the sequence of the inner products if this sequence converges, that means this difference would be smaller and smaller as we uh, increase the index n. And if this distance would be smaller and smaller, so th uh, this norm would also being a lesser quantity than this distance would also be lesser than that. So that means SNX would, all, uh, would be a Cauchy sequence whenever uh, for large values of n, right? And moreover, if uh, this SN is a Cauchy sequence, it would also converge. Why? Because the given space H that is given to be a Hilbert space. And you know, every Hilbert space is a complete space, right? Every Hilbert space is a complete inner product space. So that means you have the sequence SNX as a convergent sequence. And what was SNX? If you see, uh, we have defined this SN to be equal to k minus tn right so what would be tn from here tn would be equal to k minus sn now we, because we have built our result on s uh, the sequence snx we could also talk about tnx so that means the sequence tnx would also converge and uh, so let's define the limit as tx and clearly this limit is depending on x as soon as you change the element x from here your sequence would not be converging here right i'm not saying it is not it would not be converging uh, the sequence would be dependent on x right as soon as you change the element you have changes in the convergence of this sequence right so we could write that tnx would converge to tx for every x. Why every x? Because we have considered x as some arbitrary member of the given Hilbert space. So here we have uh, defined uh, this operator t from h to h, which is a linear operator, right? So this 
limit operator that is also defined on the given hilbert space this is a self adjoint operator why because tn was a self adjoint operator and moreover the inner product is continuous so its limit operator that is t is also self adjoint this is also a some property uh, of self adjoint operators okay so we have proved that the sequence tn x this converges and moreover it is bounded for every element x here so using the uniform bounded theorem this operator t is bounded if we have the operator t the limit operator as bounded operator uh, so we have almost all the results with us let's see the statement first of all once more so here we have proved that this is a linear operator we have proved that this is a bounded operator we have proved that this limit operator is a self adjoint operator now we are left to prove that t is related to k let's see uh, how it is related with k uh, t uh, is related with k because all the tns they are related with k because you have defined your sequence in such a way that t1 is related to t2 t2 is related with t3 t3 is related with t4 and so on so the limit operator t would also be related with the operator k here so this ends the proof of the theorem here so i hope you understood the proof here the proof is a little lengthy but it is very easy and simple uh, so uh, that is it for this video Thank you for watching.